So here's a question for you. How do I record a video without actually going live? That was the exact question I got asked by my friend and colleague, Alex, who runs a health and wellness business. She said that she's quite happy to use Facebook's own live producer to go live inside of her private Facebook group, but she doesn't know how to pre-record a video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually pre-record a video so that you can upload it at any time to your social media platforms. So my name is Anita Wong and I'm a video creator and live streaming expert and I simplify the tools at your fingertips to make it easier for you and your business to get the visibility you deserve. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Zoom to actually pre-record your video. So I've been using Zoom since I started doing any video creation because it is this one-stop tool to help you to, number one, record videos of your own, number two, have one-to-one -one interviews with people, and number three, I did use it to live stream into Facebook and into YouTube before I discovered the multi-streaming tools that I now currently use. So Zoom is a really cool tool and they have actually expanded their use during the COVID situation that we all find ourselves in. But I just wanted to quickly briefly go over the fact that you can even sign up for free on Zoom and do all the video recording that you want to. Now to actually record a video so that you can actually download it and use it yourself, you do have to host a meeting. So you go in as if you were going to perhaps have a one-to-one -one with a colleague. So you go up here on the right and it says host a meeting and you can choose to have the video on, off or you screen share only. So I would recommend that you go in and you do video on. It will then ask you to open up the Zoom app. So you do have to download like an application for your computer. So once you've signed up to Zoom, it will walk you through the process that you need to do. But I'm sure that most of you have had some contact with Zoom, especially over the last 12 months. So go ahead and open up your Zoom. Okay, so as you can see from the screen, mine has automatically started recording. Now, it doesn't automatically do that. So go ahead and stop that. And I just wanna go through some of the basic settings with you before you start recording, because it will really help to improve the quality of your videos when you do start to record. So as you can see from the screen, we are inside the Zoom dashboard. Now, at the bottom here, we have our mute button, we have our stop video button, we have a security button, a participants button, a chat, and a share screen button. Now, the things that are the most important when you're using Zoom as a video only tool are the record button, the share screen button, the stop video, and the mute button. So let's just run through some of those basics so that when you do start using Zoom as a recording tool, you'll get it right first time. So let's just run through some of the settings along the bottom of the dashboard. As you can see, next to the mute button, we have this little arrow. If you click that arrow, it's going to open up your microphone settings. So if you haven't got an external microphone, then just make sure that your microphone settings are set as the system or the MacBook Pro or whichever device that you are using. I do have an external microphone, as you can see here. So mine is set as my Yeti stereo microphone. You will need to ensure that your microphone is plugged in. So if you're using your EarPods, for example, then you need to make sure that they're connected with Bluetooth and that you've selected them as a microphone. And if you've got a separate headphones with a mic in, just do exactly the same as that. The speaker is usually what comes out of your laptop or your desktop. If you have external speakers, you will need to select those if you want to capture the sound that's coming out of your computer as well. You can test your microphone and your speaker, which I would suggest that you do just to make sure that you don't go ahead and record a video and then find out that it hasn't actually recorded the sound for you. So to do that, you just click on test speaker. It will help you. If you can hear the, the ringtone, you just say yes. And then it will ask you to speak and then it will pause. Yes. And then it will ask you to speak and then it will pause. And you just go ahead and click yes that you've done it. And then you just finish off by clicking the finish button. So the next setting along, which is your video settings, are really, really important, especially when you are pre-recording video to use elsewhere. So click that button there and it's going to open up some selections. The first thing you want to do is ensure that the correct camera has been chosen. Now I'm using a Logitech Stream Cam. However, if I was to move this over and I just use my own computer camera, you can see the difference automatically. You see how much my camera is so much different. So if you do have an external camera, I highly recommend that you use that for this particular tool. Okay, and then 
Also inside of this area, you have the video settings. So I do really recommend that you have a little look in these video settings to make sure that your video is set up properly. To get there, you click on the video settings. Now this is going to open up this other window, which might seem a bit scary at first, but really all you need to make sure are a couple of settings. The first one is that you are, if you can, that you record in HD. Mirror My Image helps you to show off writing. So if you have a whiteboard that you're using during your video recording, you wanna play with this to make sure that the writing is shown the correct way when people are viewing your video. The Touch Up My Appearance is a really good tool that Zoom have, which really basically just sort of smooths all the wrinkles off of your face. And most of us have this setting on, regardless of whether we're wearing makeup or not. Adjust for low light means that your Zoom settings will automatically adjust for low light. Now obviously when you are pre-recording a video, you want to make sure that your lighting is really spot on. Now the best lighting of course is natural lighting. So if you position your desk in front of a window, then you're going to get your natural lighting. However, depending on the time of year, you may not be able to rely on natural lighting to light up the space. So I'm actually using a, a Elgato light but you can use a ring light or any other type of light that you can utilize to make sure that you're lit up so that people can see you in your recording. Now here is another one, always display participants' names on their videos. So you won't see your participants' names in your pre-recorded videos. So even though you can see my name on the bottom left-hand side at the moment, when you watch the replay of this, you won't see my name. So don't worry about that at the moment. And then the other settings in here are really to do with if you are doing a meeting with other people. Now there is an advanced area down here for when we are doing our recording. So the recording area is super important for you. So if you click that, you just want to make sure that you number one, know where your recording is going to go inside of your computer. Because I know that some of my clients and friends and family have said to me, oh, I've been using that Zoom tool and I actually pressed the record button, but now I can't find my recording because for some strange reason, it's completely disappeared on my computer. What's happened is that Zoom have chosen a file for your videos to go into. So you can actually choose where you would like your files to go to. And it makes it so much easier if you know that every time you do a Zoom video and you've recorded it, that you'll be able to find that recording. So you can go ahead and choose where you would like your recording to go. And you can choose a new location and you can maybe create a new file inside of your computer, which has your Zoom recordings going into there every time so that you know exactly where to find them when you want to use them on your social media channels. Okay, the next one is choose a location to save your recording. We've already done that. Record a separate audio file for each participant. So that's if you're, you have people with you. So maybe you might be interviewing people in your pre-recorded video. You can actually get two separate audio files. This is really good if you want to start thinking about doing podcasts in the future. Add a timestamp to your recording. I would say that you wouldn't want to do this because you want your videos to be timeless. You want somebody to find your video on maybe Facebook or YouTube in a year's time and still want it to be relevant. And adding a timestamp actually ages your videos. So I would recommend that you wouldn't add the timestamp. Now, one of the things that I do quite a lot in my video recording is I record my screen. So you might have seen from a lot of my videos, such as this one, that I am actually recording my screen at the same time as doing a video recording. Now, what Zoom will enable you to do is that it will put your little picture of you to the right hand side of the screen. So the green takes up the whole visual field and then there is like a black panel and then there'll be an image of you. And now Zoom do offer some cloud storage as well. So depending on the package that you have will depend on how much cloud storage they have. But I actually always like to download the videos directly to my computer so that I know exactly where they're going once I finish my recording. Okay, so another area just so you know inside the video settings is this virtual background. Now, I already have my background worked out. However, some of you may want to have a virtual background in the background. And what Zoom does is it enables you to have that virtual background without having to have a green screen. So it sort of saves you spending more money. If you wanted to do that, you click on the virtual backgrounds. And as you can see, they have a selection inside of here, but you can also upload your own from maybe Canva, for instance, has some Zoom virtual backgrounds that you can change to your own branding and then download and upload in here. So you can actually swap them over. So if I went with the grass, it would actually put the grass behind me. If you did the um, San Francisco bridge, it would do that. If you wanted to be in outer space, it would do that. The only thing I would say with that is that if you move around, 
sometimes you disappear in the virtual screen. So you see how my hands are waving. The virtual screen doesn't capture my hands very well. So you would have to sit very still if you wanted to actually have a virtual screen in there. But if you don't want to, you just click none. They've also added these little video filters as well. If you wanted to mix up your videos, you could actually have all these different things on here. If you wanted to create maybe a fun video as well or something a bit topical, um, we're at Christmas at the moment, so I could actually put reindeer, hat, reindeer antlers on with my Santa hat. Okay, so that's the filters as well. So let's just turn those off. So those are the general settings in the audio and the video area that you would want to have a quick look at to make sure they're set correctly before you start recording yourself on your video. Now, I don't want to take too long going through all of the settings down here, but the next one that I think you might want to learn about is when you want to share a screen. Now, if you're a teacher or you are somebody who likes to use visuals when you are doing a video, then sharing a screen might come in useful for you. What sharing a screen does is it enables you to pull any application from your computer to share inside of your video recording. So that could be something on the internet that you wanted to share, that could be a PowerPoint or even the white screen that they have. So if you go ahead and click share screen, what happens is that you can choose from what's on offer. So you can use the whiteboard, which we would cover in a separate video. You can actually attach your iPhone or your iPad via AirPlay or via your cable, or the most common would be to share your screen using the Google Chrome. So if I click on that and I click share screen, it's going to bring up the screen that I have behind me. So as you can see, I've shared the screen with you and Zoom has automatically popped my little window of me over on the right hand side as we're looking at it now. Okay, so then the next thing that you need to learn about is how do you record inside of Zoom? So all you need to do is press this big record button here. When you press that record button, you're going to get two options. Number one, record onto the computer that you're using, or number two, record to the cloud, which is what we discussed earlier, that Zoom will actually save the recording for you up to a limit, depending on your plan. Preferably, I would go for record on this computer. And what will happen is that when we press that button, it's going to record your video. And then when you stop the recording and you end your meeting, it will then save that video file to the designated area that you just chose when we went through the video settings earlier. Okay, so all we need to do is click record on this video. So now what's happening is Zoom is actually recording me talking to you. And as you can see up here, we have a pause option and a stop option. So you could actually pause the video recording whilst you are doing your recording. And you know maybe the doorbell went or the kids have come in the room and you just want to pause it or you've forgotten your train of thought or you've forgotten to go and grab something or you forgot to put your lippy on or your makeup or you just, you know, you've noticed that there's a pair of knickers in the background or something that you don't want in the background. So what you can do then is you can stop the pause and carry on recording. However, if you do notice that maybe you have some underwear in the background that you don't want in your video, you can actually stop your recording. You don't have to close the meeting down. All you need to do is start the recording again and start from the beginning. So you go ahead and click record this computer and it will go over what you've just done again. Okay, so then just carry on doing your recording and stop. So as Zoom doesn't have a limit to you hosting your own meeting, you could record over and over and over again for as long as you wish, and your videos can be as long as you want them to be. A little tip for creating video length. So a super video tip for you is that if you do have a long topic to talk about, try dividing up your topic into short, actionable videos so that your viewer doesn't get bored or doesn't get overwhelmed by the length of video that you have there. Okay, so all that's left to do now is to show you exactly how to get your recording from within Zoom. So you will need to end the meeting. So click end meeting and it will say end meeting for all. Even if it's just you, it will always say that because it's a generic way of ending the meeting for however many participants that you may have in the meeting. So go ahead and click end meeting for all. This is going to close Zoom down completely. And as you can see, it's automatically converting the meeting recording for you so that it actually goes into your computer. Okay, so then if you want to check what your video sounds like, you can go ahead and double click the video and it's going to open up the video for you. And you go ahead and press play. So now what's happening is Zoom is actually 
And as you can see, it's captured a perfect video for me. So all you need to do then is to name your video. So one of the ways I do that is once I open it up here and I listen to what the content is, I click on the name up here and I can then rename the video. So what you wanna do is you wanna name the video from the point before the .mp4, because the .mp4 helps the computer recognize the video format. So then all you need to do is delete this here and just type in the title of your video. Do that, press return, and it will automatically change the title of your video. Go ahead and close that down. And you're all finished with your Zoom meeting and you're back to square one where you would then go ahead and click host a meeting with video on. So I hope that's helped you understand how to pre-record a video that you can use across all of your social media channels without actually having to go live. So I chose Zoom because it's a tool that we've all got used to over the last 12 to 18 months. And I hope, Alex, that this has helped you to start your video creation journey without using the Facebook Live producer. So if you've enjoyed this video and you would like to learn more about video creation and live streaming, then please do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for the next time I upload a video just like this one or I actually go live into my YouTube channel. And also, if you have any questions about using video or live streaming, then please do drop them in the comments below this video and I'll happily do a video for you. All that's left to say is have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.